And it's time for another teardown in Cool Dude Clem's electronic workshop. Now, I didn't think I was going to bring home another one of these. But I just happened to find this just sitting in one of the garage blocks. Completely abandoned. And yes, it's another subwoofer system. But I'm not, I didn't bring this home to, so I could use it. I bought this home so I can get bits out of it because, like they say on the EV blog, don't turn it on, take it apart. Hmm. Didn't know I could sound like that. We have loads and loads of LEDs. I'm sure I can make some use of those. On the back. See it. But the main reason why I got this, and I was going to pass this up, and that is until I had a look inside the base port. And I can actually get this out. I have a bit of camera work here. You might be able to see we have what looks like a toroidal transformer in there. It's something I've been looking for for quite some time. And that's the main reason why I brought this home. So let's crack this sucker open again. It uses those hexagon screws. So I've got my trusty Allen key set thingy. I don't know what you call it. I'm going to take it back off. And oh yeah, if this sounds a little bit muffled, it was because I'm using the only microphone I've got at the moment is the one built into my webcam. And I, even with my fan on really, really low, it picks up a whole lot of wind noise. So I've actually literally put a wind sock on it. Literally got a sock, folded it up and stuck it on top of the microphone to stop the wind getting in. There's going to be a new episode of Tube Time while I'm opening this. I'll tell you all about that and a couple of other upcoming videos. So, so the next video there's going to be a new episode of Tube Time. That's going to be interesting. There's a couple of circuits I want to try out and see how well they work. And in the next video from that, I'm going to try and fix my microphone preamp. Anyway, I'm going to be a little while on doing all these screws, so time for a time lapse. I don't know if you can understand what I'm saying here. The thing is, I'm speeding up the video, picking the pitch of the audio the same, so I'm speaking slowly, so I'm doing this. Oh, my ugly head is in the shot. I'm sure you wanted to see that. Yes, is that a Oh, I just noticed that all you can see right now is my back. Okay, just two more screws. Just to hold my tongue at the right angle. Okay, that's all the screws talk out, uh, and I can now talk like normal again. Right, well, let's just lay this down and see what's inside. All right. In we go, into the unknown. Let's see, what? I thought the magnet on the speaker we had before was big, but look at the size of that one! I think that's a little bit overkill, actually. Still. Here's an amplifier circuit. Do we have anything interesting in here? Um... Hard to tell. I'm not sure if those are chips or transistors on the thing. As I cannot get the camera very good. Mind you, I'm not so interested in this part. It's this part in here that I'm interested in. Now, how is we gonna get that out of there? That's the question. I'm gonna need my long screwdriver. Scrape this screwdriver here that's almost as long as my dick. I don't know if I should leave that, leave that edited in, but anyway. Let's get this little board out, this little rectifier board. I don't 
think there's any voltage regulators on there. You can see a couple of bridge rectifiers. Um, actually, if we could just turn this around so you, we can, so the camera can see it properly. That's a problem when I'm doing these videos. Half the time, I don't realize that what I'm doing isn't in the camera shot properly. So I'm just rabbiting on. Without any knowledge of it. Well, this board sure is screwed in tight. I wouldn't have thought they would have used thicker wires for the big speaker. There's a little rectifier board. Don't know if these caps are still good. This one looks a little bit bulged right there. Don't have a capacitance meter that could measure these. An ESR meter is probably something I'm gonna invest in. Maybe. Maybe. Right, well, let's get that transformer out of there. Okay, I'm back. With wrenches. Tried to find my adjustable one, but it seems to go missing, so I just pour a few in in the hopes that one of these is the right size, and if not, I'm gonna have to use pliers to get this out. Okay, that one doesn't fit. Let's see how this one fits. I'll show you the other end. Okay, that one's too big. The other one was too small. Typical, isn't it? You can never find the one of the right size. See this one? Ah, this one fits. So let's get this out of there. I hope there's not another nut turning at the other end. No, nope, it's loosening up. Hmm. Surprisingly, there was. Well, not surprisingly, actually, there was another nut at the other end. Here's my prize for my hard work. Yeah. And you know the... Oh, I wasn't holding it in the camera. And you know the nice thing about these? You can rewind them easily. That's what I really love about these. And they're nice and efficient as well. Well, okay, I'm just going to clip these wires, because like I said, I'm not going to use this. Now, this front panel, how are we going to get that out? I have absolutely no idea with this. I think that's just glued in. I don't really think I'm going to be able to get that out of there. Not that it matters, because like I said, I just want this for bits and pieces. And we can take a close look at that amplifier board now. There we go, there's the amplifier board. Just get that in the camera bed. Oh, my windsock has fallen off. So we've got some pretty beefy transistors down here, not quite as beefy as the one that we found in that previous amplifier. I mean that Sony amplifier by the way, not the not the other subwoofer thing. I guess that's a push-pull output stage for the subwoofer. I'd be surprised if that was for something else. It's like they've gone to a lot of trouble of shielding the inputs from the dust and stuff like that. There's a lot, a lot of gunk over that. Didn't expect to see that. And there's the output transist, I mean the output chips for the other channels. Surprising there's not five of those since this is a 5.1 system. Unless they're only using half of one of those and those are dual outputs, I'm not exactly. And cannot be bothered to look them up. Now, how? Oh, my TV's just turned itself off for some reason, I don't know why. Oh. The camera wasn't looking at it. 
You know what's irritating? You can see it right through to the circuit board there. I have no idea how to get it out. I just do not ha know how to get that bit out. There doesn't seem to be any way in. There doesn't seem to be any screws holding it in. Although they're probably hidden somewhere. They're probably hidden under these feet, actually. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see. I can see one screw there, and the screw there, okay. Not gonna call it a day just yet. And get those screws out. Oh, these are coming out a lot easier than I thought. I don't know what happened to good old fashioned stereo. Now, why are we gonna have all these five point. Do you realize it's almost impossible to find a good set of stereo speakers these days? I mean, you try to find speakers, and it's always one of these powered subwoofer based things, you know? What's wrong with a good pair of stereo speakers you can hook up to your amplifier? There's the speaker. That's quite compliant, actually. The other speaker, I had to push that quite a bit to make the cone move. This one. I could just stop the rest of it moving. Oh, I can really see the rolling shutter of my camera making a, making that look really wobbly there. Oh, I was hoping maybe after I took those screws out that would shed some light onto how to get that main board out. But all that's revealed is the actual sp how to get the speaker itself. I might as well take that out. I might be able to make some use of that. Well, anyway, there's the teardown of this thing. Anyway, I will just go and upload this and then I will see about getting on with the next episode of Tube Time.